Hello everyone, I have been covering LEGO Star Wars sets related to the sequel trilogy from The Force Awakens through The Last Jedi to The Rise of Skywalker for now five years, five years, a full half a decade. But of course, that series of movies is now well and truly over and thus LEGO's coverage of that series is winding down. And with that, I will be winding down my own coverage of those sets. However, I did collect the sets and I did hold on to them this whole time. To do this, to kick this off, a retrospective look back at the series on the whole, just casually, not with a focus on the minutia, not with a focus on uh, little data points that can be pulled from Bricksat or from Wikipedia or something, just to give you my thoughts as a Star Wars fan, and I've been a Star Wars fan now for uh, somewhere around 40 years myself, around, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, around four decades, yeah. Uh, and also as a Lego fan, but not as a reviewer, you know, just, this is just me talking about what I feel about these things. And I will be taking input from viewers along the way. I, I'm looking in comment sections and looking for what you're interested in hearing from me. But let's just get this started right now with what I think is an excellent starting point comparison between the two major Millennium Falcons that they did, the roughly minifig scale or minifig compatible ones that they did in 2015. And then this is the most recent one in 2019. So you're almost seeing the full breadth of the, the era here and how Lego design has changed in that half a decade covering this span of, of three movies. The price difference between these two is $10, which is really not very significant, so not something major to uh, to focus on. And similarly, the part counts between these two are statistically insignificant in, in their difference. However, this one from 2015, the Force Awakens one, of course, the radar dish is different, but otherwise, you know, same ship in universe. This one, has used the same design or did use the same basic design concept that was first introduced in 2004 with the second generation ever version, the second major design of Millennium Falcon from Lego. This is using the same basic design. It has worked well. I had the 2011 version and loved it. I thought that it was great. I felt like they really didn't need to do much better. But this one in some ways does or did a bit better, but then they up and changed it. 2019. Well, this has a fundamentally different design concept to it for a number of things. Some of the same ideas were used, but many of the, the shapes and uh, major components of it were updated, especially with the mandibles being a more accurate shape now. Uh, if you just compare it to the source material, of course, this is not going to be properly proportioned because it does have to accommodate minifigures and at least two minifigures in the cockpit and Lego minifigures are not to proper scale to humans. So there's no way you're ever going to get something like this that works with minifigures at a reasonable size to be the correct proportions overall. But this I feel was a big step in a good direction and it shows a lot of a lot of what has changed over the past five years, five, six, yeah, I'd say about six years or so uh, that I've seen some, some serious evolutionary changes with, with Lego, thanks to the introduction of new parts. A lot of new parts and new color combinations have allowed them to do things that they couldn't do before. Like for instance, up here in, in the front, in those mandibles, these are uh, two by two semicircle uh, tiles that didn't exist before. So you just couldn't do that nice smooth shape. They've also introduced a number of smaller uh, wedge plates. Quickly looking at this, I don't see, I don't see the smaller ones used, but I do some, see some larger ones used, which I have, I believe have been uh, recolored for this. But uh, that's one of the major things that has, has changed over these, these recent years that has affected 
subtly the designs and we'll look at this as as we go we'll look at this in different sets and different pieces of subject matter that, that have been covered over time you know even just over these years where little pieces becoming available have allowed them to change things massively but i personally feel like this is just the best millennium falcon that they've done to date leaving the ucs one completely out of the out of the debate because, well, it's just inaccessible to the vast majority of people. This is something that a lot of fans can buy. Something UCS is something that most fans cannot buy. And I'm actually really happy and kind of proud of, of LEGO's designers for what they've been able to do, how much they've been able to advance their own state of the art over time. A lot of fans complained about the old design, including the ones that came before it from 2004, 2011, this one here. Complain about the gaps between all these pizza slices. Look, what do I have here? Oh, some extra projectiles <laughs> that I was storing with it. All those pizza slice pieces had gaps between them and you could see inside, especially if you had good lighting in your space, you could see inside of there. And I feel like that was made even worse and more obvious with this version in particular for The Force Awakens, how they had just so much bright and vivid tan color used in the movie and then used here to try to match for interior bits. Just that light color and with its saturation compared to gray really, really stands out. So when these things were down, these slices were down and people would see a little bit of light getting through there, I'll do about half of them. Hopefully, let's see if, if you'll be able to see some of it up there. Maybe not so much. Don't have absolute complete lighting here, but all those gaps, every single one of these little bits here would let you see through there. And now with the more recent one, they switched to larger slices, basically. They just sliced it fewer times. They sliced the pie fewer times. So that just ends up giving us less gaps. Now, interestingly, a lot of, of custom builders, a lot of mock builders have done their own versions of similar scaled Millennium Falcons. And admittedly, I have not looked at those super, super carefully um, in some years, but many have done Millennium Falcons that didn't have those gaps. So what took Lego so long to do it officially itself? I think some of it may have been holding on to you know, a little bit of inertia, a little bit of design inertia, where they're just holding on to something that seemed to be working. Um, and some of it is the, the classic limitations that Lego designers have. A lot of people don't like me to, uh, to defend Lego designers for this, but oh well, these, these are my thoughts here, not uh, just trying to regurgitate what other people have said. Uh, it's a lot harder to be a Lego designer than a simple, I shouldn't say simple, but a mock designer, right? A, a fan designer. Lego des designers have to consider things that fan designers do not. And it's not just about durability. One of the biggest things that I've learned and come to understand through these years of, of covering Lego products is how difficult it is and how much effort goes into the process of making these things easy to assemble and making the instructions easy to follow. Yes, there are plenty of custom creations out there that are very good and that have instructions made for them. Some of them, some of the instructions are made by computer and adult fans can follow them. But the majority of fans that Lego designs for and that they have to pass reviews for in, internally uh, in order to get sets actually into the production phase, that age range that they go for is much, much lower than most of us people on the internet who, you know, who are in, in comments, in forums, on, on reddits, doing YouTube videos and such can understand. They're really going for younger kids and, and family building scenarios. They're really going for folks who don't have a lot of experience with Lego with pieces, with assembly, and with their, uh, their, their instructions even. And that 
creates a lot of limitations. And I see it more and more the more that I, I pay attention to those things. The, the effort that's involved in, for lack of a better term, dumbing down the design for the sake of ease of build. It's the same reason that they make most of their Technic uh, axle pins in blue, so that it's easier to find the pieces. And they try to do the short axles in red to make it easier to pick them out from the black standard length pins in a, a pile or a bowl or a Tupperware tub of parts on a, a, a dining table, you know? So I, I do have to give Lego itself a lot of credit for the work that they do. But fortunately, when they do make mistakes, when they do things that aren't ideal, they do tend to improve them over time. You can go back and look at my review of the first Millennium Falcon. That wasn't that long ago. That was back in the days when I first came back to Lego as an adult. So that really wasn't that long ago when you consider how long Lego itself has been around. Look at that, 2000, that year 2000 Millennium Falcon and compare it to this. Tell me that they have not improved significantly over time. My favorite thing about this, it's probably not even the the improvement to the to the shaping. Um, I do very much like the access to the interior. That's really important. And I feel like that's important to people of, of all ages, like all that space that you can get into, even if they don't have a tremendous amount of detail in there now, which is a little bit disappointing, maybe that they didn't have more detail back here in the, the hyperdrive se section, especially. That's something they did much better, I feel, in the 2004 version, even. It was just more exciting. There's more stuff there. But... My, fav my personal favorite thing about this, about this one, is the laser cannon. And it goes for the top and the bottom. Because they use these little dark gray minifig ski poles. I just looked at those pieces on another set. The most recent uh, Poe Dameron's X-Wing polybag version that uses those for laser cannons. But... Again, just the little things, the little details matter and make a big difference. Like that just looks like a really nice, fine detail. And it gives more validation, I think, to Lego's more recent push towards increasing their, their part inventory, the variety of pieces that they make available, especially at a small size. Another one that's been used so much for detail recently <laughs> is the little roller skate piece, the minifig roller skate piece, just a great part for, uh, for the sake of, of, uh, of greebling, you know, texture for the sake of texture, detail for the sake of texture, uh, detail for the sake of, of detail. Also recolors of parts and making less common colors more available, more readily available. Like the, there's the nearest one right here in dark gray. The old school phone handset piece, another really useful thing, another really small thing, but helps, you know, helps a lot. And they're focusing a little bit more these days on brick-based things as opposed to, well, you know, a combination of, of Technic and brick-based stuff, which is very compatible. And I feel like they're both very, um, very legitimate to the Lego system. And they're integrated well, but like for instance, these uh, the, the whole exhaust area, the whole gl glowing blue area, also did a good job putting lighter color underneath those trans light blue pieces to make that appear to glow from a distance. But previously, they were using those those tubes. Now that technically is part of the Technic system, but it's just not as much so. This one does use flexible uh, flexible bars going around, so maybe a little a little gain, a little loss there, but I feel like this just almost feels a little bit more like a cheat to get an interesting shape and an interesting look. I actually kind of like that look myself, and I like the piece. Um, you know, it's, it's a a rare color for that that system of, of hoses that they've used and you know, I use those parts a lot back in the large action figure days when I did, dealt with Bionicle and uh, and Hero Factory so I thought they were pretty cool but to me this is just more pure more proper Lego Lego 
system Lego brick-based stuff. Overall, uh, I, I think both of these are pretty good, but the new one, the new one is just an improvement. I feel like folks who care about the exact silhouette and proportions will appreciate the forward movement here, but will still not like the fact that the cockpit, cockpit area is huge and not quite in the right place because of factors that can't be overridden here. The fact that they need to get minifigures in there. This one did have more detail inside. Some of that detail was just random boxes and crates and things that were spread about, but they also had the larger uh, hyperdrive section in there, which I, I really like. And I feel like that is something that can be enjoyed by people of all ages because, you know, folks who care about the, the collectability and the seriousness will look at that and be like, yeah, hey, that's a lot of detail. And, you know, when you're assembling, you have to put all that stuff together. And I think that kids, even the youngest of kids, even below the recommended age range for something like this, can look at that. And even if they don't know what it is, whether they know what it is or not, they can look at that and be like, oh, that's stuff. And that's interesting stuff. It's tech stuff. It's mechanical stuff. It's stuff that I can interact with, with my minif minifigures. I can put a story to that. I can have fun with that. I can play with that. Even if it doesn't actually do anything, it's not an action feature, but kids will make it into an, an actionable thing. It's a, a place where action occurs. It gets the mind thinking. It feels good. So in that sense, this did have that increased detail, but this I just feel overall is just a better, just a better thing. You also have access underneath. You could ultimately <laughs> drop out the little pod back here. Uh, wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it could could be done as an as an escape pod. Um, yeah. Oh, got a little ahead of myself right there. One single hinge point. Let me know what you think about these two, though. You know, this, I felt like this would be a good place to start because these are two large things. They represent the same in-universe item at the same scale. They're made with roughly the same number of pieces. So it feels like really an apples to apples comparison. And of course, the Millennium Falcon itself has been one of those things that has carried all the way through the entire uh, Skywalker saga series. So it has that little bit of emotional connection to the history of of Star Wars itself. But I will continue on. I will continue doing more things like this. Again, focusing on my own personal thoughts and not everybody will be interested in hearing that stuff and that's perfectly fine. But I collected these sets. I've held on to them intentionally to be able to make comparisons at the end of the sequel series, at the end of the, the Skywalker saga on the whole, after all these years of of following it and now is the time so i will continue thank you for watching let me know if you have any uh, uh, concerns if you have any questions if you have anything in particular that you would like to see me cover any questions that you would like me to answer including on stuff that i've already covered up to this point i am perfectly willing to go back and of course i won't be looking at just the built up things i'll also be looking at the figures and i'll do at least one video maybe multiple videos just talking about the figures by themselves and looking at their progression and their number and see what kind of, uh, if there is any if any progression to be seen that's that's obvious, that makes sense to, to talk about, or if there are any trends and, and groupings that I can put together. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Look forward to your feedback. And I'll talk to you again soon.